Epistle to Titus. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people once again and to share the unadulterated word of God. So we ask you right now, Lord, for clarity of mind and thought that we may apprehend the blessings of your glory and the richness of your grace. So we thank you, we praise you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Titus chapter 2. And as we look at this book, we recall in chapter 1, uh, Paul's word to, to Titus. Uh, he, he started the, the, the book with the greeting, and he started with the qualifications of the elders. Um, that's, uh, chapter 1 was basically, uh, as Titus was given the charge of, uh, of finding pastors for the churches that would uh, develop in his region. He was on the island of Crete and he was given the charge to to train pastors, find men, find people who could do the work of ministry and uh, do it faithfully. And he was given these uh, Paul gave him the qualifications of elders and these were the same qualifications that Paul gave to Timothy in his epistle. But when we get here to chapter 2, uh, uh, why do you want the right people leading the churches? So that they will teach sound doctrine. So chapter 2 basically is about uh, 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 the really the subject is teaching sound doctrine. It's, it, it's the, the pastor's primary duty is to equip the saints for service, for usefulness in the kingdom, and, and you do that by teaching sound doctrine. Uh, people don't get better. People don't become better Christians if you're just all over the place. If you're not consistent with your teaching, you're not teaching truth, you're not handling the word of God accurately, so it's important that you teach sound doctrine. And that's where he starts right, right here, verse 1 in chapter 2. He says, but thou speak the things which become sound doctrine. That's what you want to do. Teach sound doctrine. You absolutely got to teach sound doctrine because, for, for, and if we sc scroll down, to verse number five, and we're going to stay in line, but I want you to see something. That the word of God be not blasphemed. See, if you're not teaching sound doctrine, you're going to make the word of God look crazy. Teach sound doctrine. That the word of God be not blasphemed. And what he is saying here, verse two. Uh, uh, that the aged men be grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity and patience. Really, these first ten verses are basically giving instructions concerning Christian conduct. So, the doctrine dealing with Christian conduct. What should Christian conduct look like? And that's what he's giving you. Giving instructions. Uh, 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 what does a true Christian look like? What, how should he behave? that the word of God be not blasphemed. See, if we don't conduct ourselves accordingly, uh, you know, folks love to see out the side of their mouth, and he's supposed to be a Christian, and she's supposed to be a Christian. See, when you call on the name of Jesus Christ, when you proclaim the bloodstained banner, but your walk don't line up with what folks seeing, they talking about you behind, they, behind your back, some talking about you in your face, and they, and, and they bring in the name of Christ in the mud. You don't want that. So if you teach sound doctrine and people grasp the sound doctrine, <laughs> that won't happen. If, people, if, 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 if you're teaching the right things and people's behaviors line up with the truth, the name of Jesus Christ would not be blasphemed. So he starts out, verses 1 and 2, giving instructions to older men. How should the older men behave in the church? He says, the, the, uh, the uh, aged men should be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, 
in charity and patience. This is a, a, a lifestyle. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, uh, sober, keep a calm head. You ain't all over the place. You're not acting ratchet. Sober. Just like somebody who ain't drunk. Sober. Great. Uh, keep life serious when it's supposed to be serious. Temperate. That means uh, you, you're, uh, uh, keep things in moderation. Uh, moderation is the key. Don't get, it's okay to have fun, but you can't have fun all the time. You need to be serious, but uh, there's time to laugh, time to joy. You should enjoy life. You shouldn't be a stick in the mud. Temperate. It, you don't go all out doing anything. Sound in faith. Uh, uh, you, you want your understanding of the word of God to be balanced. Uh, we, we, you can't be holier than thou. You're trying to win people to Jesus Christ. And you, and you do it, and he says, in charity. That, that word charity, basically love. You got to love your fellow men. In fact, the word is agape. You know, it, it, that's it, the King James translator say charity, but that's the word agape. That means you love uh, your fellow man. You are a, the, the person who uh, 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 loves in spite of. You show love for your fellow man. Love for the for the believers. Love for the body of Christ. In patience, not everybody going to grow at the same rate. Give them some leeway. Uh, some folks grow in grace fast. Some folks kind of slow. So you have to be patient. Remember, everybody running the same race, but they're running at a different pace. So be patient. You are a, and, and, and so the, you, you, you remember, this is what he is to teach the elders, to teach the, te teach the, the, the leaders in the church, to teach the older men in the church how to behave. So, in verse 3, he's dealing with the, the older women. Verses 3 and 4 basically are the older women. Age women likewise. They be, they, they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Now, as we go through these verses, you're going to, like in verse 1, he said, speak. Which basically uh, 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 speak things with the sound doctrine. The verse uh, uh, three, teachers of good things. Verse four, teach. So the idea here is you need to be teaching. Teach the elders how to teach. And the best way to teach is to live it out in front of them. You be a good example. You might be the only Bible that somebody is going to see. If, if they watch you, they should be okay. If you are living according to faith, sound in faith, grave, sober, temperate, a, a, a loving manner, be patient, age women likewise. The same when he says when he said likewise, what was true for the older men is true for the older women. He did he add some things to it. That, they, that their behavior as becometh holiness. Uh, you can't live ratchet and expect to win people over to Christ. Uh, but you also can't live holier than thou. So that you say one thing and, you, and you're not being patient with other people when they're not at your level. Not false accusers. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, I guess he think uh, some of you, you know, uh, don't accuse people of stuff that's not true. Uh, uh, stuff where there's no evidence. Not given to much wine. He didn't say not given to no wine. He said much wine. In other words, you can't be the public drunkard. Teachers are good things. 
verse 4, and, and why, did, why is it important for the aged women to be like that? So that they, that they may teach young women to be sober, to love their husbands, and love their children. To be discreet. What you mean by discreet? Um, you a married woman. Act like it. You a married woman. Act like it. You can't be flirting. Uh, you can't drag your husband's name in the mud with your behavior. Uh, you a married woman. Act like it. That's why the, the older women should teach the younger women you are a married woman act like it. You just, you've seen young men before. That's not your husband. Act like that ain't your husband. <coughs> and and, and uh, so it, 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 it's important if you're going to represent Jesus Christ, you do it in the right way. So love your husbands. Love your children. To be discreet. Chaste, what that mean? You are your married woman, you be with your husband. Okay? That's what they mean. You be with your husband only. Keep us at home. Uh, mind your own business and keep your house in order. You, if you mind your own business and keep your house in order, the name of Jesus Christ is not blasphemed. If you're all over the place running from house to house, as, as he told in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in his, the letter to, to Timothy, busybodies. He didn't use the word busybodies, but that's what he's describing. Keep us at home. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. So it, it, it's important for, for the older woman to be good examples for the younger women. And the younger women need to remember, honor your husband with your behavior. Because you're honoring Jesus Christ. That the name, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now when we get down to the sixth verse, he has an exhortation. For the young men, verse 6, young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. They can't be foolish. <coughs> sober-minded. What, what, what do you mean sober-minded? Uh, uh, sober-mindedness has to do with just being serious. Uh, the, 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 the Greek word so freneo of sound mind. Get rid of stinking thinking. Sober minded. You don't want to be foolish. You don't want you, you don't want the words that come out of your mouth to reveal you to be a fool. If you don't know what you're talking about, keep your mouth shut. That's hard for some folks. So, so, so the, the, the young men, when he say young men likewise, what did he say about the young women? To be discreet? Chase? Uh, keep us at home? Obedient to your, what he said, the women are obedient to your, to your own husband? Well, uh, young men, <coughs> be respectful for your wife. Be respectful to your wife. That's what like, that word likewise means. So as it, as it was good for the woman, it's good for the young man. If you're not married, not like our day where everybody's trying to see who can get laid, be chaste. Now, he's asking a whole lot. Uh, uh, you're asking a whole lot for expecting uh, young people this day to refrain from sexual activity until they get married, but that's still the biblical standard. As hard as it is. It's still the biblical standard. We don't get a pass on that. Now the good thing is we saved by grace. God's unmerited favor. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the good good thing is uh, God knows we're going to mess up in that area. 
to, and the blood of Jesus Christ applies in that area too. But just because we got God's grace don't mean we should just do anything. We still need to be sober-minded. We still need to be uh, 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 under self to practice self-control. We still need to be of sound mind. In all things, showing myself a pattern of good works. And as we go through this book, you're going to see that word good works all the time. It's all about what it looked like. What, what do you do? What you're doing with your life? Good works. Good works. You say you're a Christian, prove it with your works. Faith without works is dead. We have the faith that allows us, that, that enables us to be saved by God's grace, but faith without works is dead. You can say you're a Christian all you want, but show me. Prove it. How do you prove it? By living it out. Not just saying it. Live it out. When folk ain't watching you, you should still walk with integrity. Integrity goes a long way. Uh, when you live with integrity, not only is God pleased, but men are also going to be pleased. You know crooks when you see them. People who walk with integrity, they stick out like a sore thumb. When you have the reputation of of, of, of of great integrity, uh, God will elevate you to positions of, of authority. You be a faith when you are faithful over a, a few things. God will make you rule over many things. Uh, that faithfulness in the small areas, God know He can He can trust you with big things. And, and even the people in this world, when they realize that you are a man or a woman who walk in integrity, uh, you are. You, you can expect elevation. You, you know, I, 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 a lot of preachers love to talk about living your best life and, and uh, God's best is, is, is yet to come. And, and that's all good. But it does not happen in a vacuum. you got to live and walk in, a, in, 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 in with integrity. Your word has to mean something. You, you put your character on display every day. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. This is how you're supposed to live. People know you're serious. People know you're honest. Uncorruptness. No corruption. Verse 8. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. If somebody repeat what you say it, if the mic, if, if, if you, whatever you say in front of a hot mic, you ain't got to worry about it. Okay, I, I need to uh, delete that. If, 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 your, your slips of the tongue are honorable. Uh, you know, we can run off at the mouth sometimes. We can have slips of the lip. Even, even if I slip, uh, you have to filter yourself when you talk, when you're speaking. Always keep the filters on. And uh, the Holy Spirit gives us the self-control. Sometimes you just keep, you have, you have to keep your mouth shut. And, and now when we get, so he, he gives us the instructions for the older men, older women, younger women, young men. And then when we get here to the, the verse 9, He's talking about, in this context, he's talking about servants. But how do we do that? How do we apply that in this day and time? Work, workplace behavior. So, you know, in, in uh, Paul's day, there were servants. There were indentured servants. There were, uh, uh, the Roman Empire was full of slaves. Uh, not much different from how slavery was in the uh, uh, early history of America, but it wasn't, you know, the, in Rome they didn't treat the slaves the way they treated our ancestors. But there was still a, a uh, 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 the slaves who were Christians had to act like Christians. 
Look what he said, verse 9. Exhort servants to be obedient to their own masters and please them well in all things, not answering again. Uh, your, your master gives you an order, uh, you don't act like you don't hear it. Just do what he say. Okay, you're on your job. You got a supervisor. He gives you an assignment. Do the assignment as best you can. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it to the glory of God. You, if you want to see yourself get promotions on the job, make your boss look good. Don't shame your boss. Whoever you report to, make them look good. Do your job so well that your immediate superior, the next time he gets a, she gets a, a promotion, they're going to promote you too. Because they realize that you are the reason why they got promoted. They'd be fooled to promote, get promoted and not promote you too. In fact, uh, you always want to train your replacement. You want to get promoted on a job, you have enough people trained to do your job so they won't be afraid to give you a promotion to another job. Y'all can write that one down. That's how you get promoted on a job. You learn your job, you learn your boss's job, so when your boss gets promoted, you can get his job. But you need to have somebody who can do your job, so you train people to do your job too. So what you saying here? Uh, 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 exhort your, your your exhort your the servants or slaves, and in our day, common workers, to be obedient to their masters. In other words, whatever company policy is, stick to it. Uh, if you're working at McDonald's, uh, adhere to the standards of operation. You're working at uh, whatever. Everybody's got a store operate manual. Stick to it. Stick, whatever the, the policy say, stick to it. And, 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 and to please them well in all things, not answering again. Verse 10, not purloining. You know what he mean by purloining? Don't go on the job stealing. I mean, my goodness, somebody give you the keys to the safe, you can't be stealing. Uh, somebody give you the key to the back door, you can't be throwing out a case of this and uh, coming home with a, a box of that and come on now. You, you got a job, don't be stealing off the job. That's what you're saying here. Showing, for, showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Remember, you represent Jesus Christ on that job. You call yourself a Christian, and then you get caught stealing out the cash register. Come on now. How do you think that make the, the body of Christ look? You, you say you're a Christian, but you got caught stealing out the cash register. You say you're a Christian, but you don't put a case of uh, napkins in, your, in the trunk of your car. You say you're a Christian, but you don't, uh, uh, you put these, uh, 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 a box of shirts. Come on. You can't do it. You can't do it. And now, uh, so he gives us in that, that ninth and tenth verse instructions on the workplace. When you're at work, do your job to the glory of God. Uh, don't think of yourself as some slave on a job. I've seen some people who have the wrong attitude about work. They, they know they got to work. You got to work for somebody. You might as well try to do find you something that you enjoy and work with people that you can enjoy working with. And even if you don't like the people that you work with, even if you don't, even if you think that you should have the job that your supervisor have, make that joker look good so he can get promoted out of there and then maybe they'll give you his job. And uh, they'll find out when he get promoted on another job or she get promoted on another job that it was you who was doing the work all the while and now uh, because they get... They hit a, a wall because you're not there. You own the job. You do it so well that uh, that the place can't function without you. Now, when we get down these last five verses, he gives instruction of the grace of God. Look at verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. That's why you want to do this. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world. See, the grace of God is, what, is, is how people get saved. 
And, and because of God's grace and people look at using us as a witness, as examples, someone might get saved. Somebody might, you want to live your life in such a way. You're on your job and you want somebody to come up to you and say, man, what is this about you? You're always in such a good mood. Uh, whenever someone say, well, how come uh, everybody else is all cussing and mad and you just as calm and you working and you, you, you know, you making the rest of us look bad. Why is that? Well, you get to tell them about Jesus. They just open the door. You, get, you have a legitimate opportunity to share the gospel. And that, that happens because of the excellence in your work, you, because of your good works. Even working for the man, your good works. It reflects on your your uh, your uh, your love for Jesus. Is reflected in the in the job you do, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust that we live soberly, righteously, godly in the present world. Guess what? Verse thirteen, one of my favorite verses in the whole Scripture. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why. That's why we do it. That's how you can go on the job day in, day out. Do that job. Respect your fellow man. Do it in such a way where it, with integrity and honor to the best of your ability. Learn, do your job. Do somebody else's job. You learn your boss's job. You teach the people below you how to do your job. Everything you do reflects favorably on the Lord Jesus Christ because you are looking for that blessed hope. You want to work every day. You want to operate every day as if Jesus Christ can come back at any minute. That's what he's talking about. And guess what? He can. And when Jesus Christ comes back, you want him to find you faithful. You, he want, you want him to find you on that job, doing whatever it is, bringing glory and honor to him. So when you stand before the judgment, he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. What's so hard about that? So when we look at Paul's letter to Titus, we need to look at that as, a, as an instruction manual. If you're training elders, if you're training uh, uh, young leaders in the church, use it as an instruction manual. It's a, great, it's a great book. Verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and to purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. And we're that word good works again. Good works. That's what it's all about. Producing good works. See, when you produce good works, it brings glory and honor to God. And people can see it. The residue is right there. Your fingerprints all over the place. Excellence, 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 integrity, uprightness. When people see that, you get honored. And, and folks watching you, you don't even realize it. And this, verse 15, this is how we close. He says, these things, here goes his word again, speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. So he's giving Titus his responsibility, this last verse. He says, speak. What are we speaking? Sound doctrine. What are we exhorting? We're exhorting people to, to behave in a manner that brings glory and honor to Christ. And we rebuke with all authority. We rebuke, that means you correct folk when they're wrong. But do it in a manner that is reflecting Jesus Christ. You don't embarrass folk. <coughs> you, you correct them in a loving manner. See, if you, you, when you correct them folk and you, uh, you throw them under the bus and you're making them look bad, they're not going to learn nothing. In fact, they're going to buck. Uh, you, you, you do it, you know, you, and you, you rebuke with all authority. Guess what? The reason why you have the authority is because you're walking under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You're walking in integrity. Uh, everything you do, you do it to the glory of God. You have excellence in everything you do, so folk, you got authenticity. Folk not going to question you because they know you're doing it right. You, you know, you, you, they're going to go along with you because they know you're doing it right. They know if they, if, if they, if you, if they do it the way you do it, they're going to be successful. And he says, let no man despise you. 
Now remember when he told uh, Timothy, let no one despise you because of your youth. So I get the idea here that Titus was a little older. Just don't let nobody despise you anyway. Uh, uh, make sure they respect you. And how do you do that? By walking in integrity. When you walk in integrity, when you live authentic, when your works speak for you, no one can say anything bad about you because you operate with excellence. And the proof is in the pudding. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people once again. We pray for those that are listening by way of Facebook and YouTube and those that may get this message uh, later. We pray that it goes forth, it goes out, and people will apprehend the truth in your word. Uh, you have given us this great illustration of what it really looks, what it means to be a leader in the church. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for uh, we thank you for this Paul and his the writings to not only Titus but also the Timothy and all the other epistles. We we need your word, Lord. If we we live by your word, and we we allow the word to get on us and dwell in us richly we know that it will it will allow us to, to clean up those rough areas in our life and we'll become a better witness Lord so to create the opportunity that we may share the good news and people will because we have lived righteously before men that we stand with credibility and they will listen to our words when we get to tell them about the Savior so we thank you we praise you and we ask it all in Jesus name and for his sake Amen uh, we see y'all next time. Uh, if this message has been uh, a blessing to you, share it. Uh, if, you, if you've been blessed by any of the messages, uh, you can always go back. Uh, everything is uh, done on, um, is archived on Facebook and YouTube. Um, if you ever want the notes, send me a Facebook or send me a, me a messenger request, and I'll download you my, my notes. Uh, you know, it don't matter to me. Now, once I've done it, it's uh, all of us going to end up in a book one of these days, but ain't nothing like uh, I, I share it. It's, it's just no, you know, no skin off my nose. It, all it took me was a little time, and uh, I'll be glad to share it if you want. Uh, we are so thankful for those that tuned in this past Sunday. Uh, Prophetess Daisy Green did an excellent job and uh, bringing the word from uh, uh, Second Chronicles. Uh, if my people will pray, boy, oh, look at him. If, if, and if we had a time when we really need to pray. Um, before I was lining up, before I was getting ready today, I saw something pop up on my screen where there was another active shooter situation. Uh, I'm not sure what had happened. I didn't get a chance to see it. We, let's still keep those people in Texas lifted up in prayer. Keep the people of Ukraine lifted up in prayer. Uh, we need to pray. We need to pray for ourselves, we need to pray for our families, we need to pray for the institutions that we are associated with, we need to pray for our government, uh, we just need to pray. We need, to, we need a praying people. Uh, we need a repentant people. So we'll see y'all next time, next Wednesday, we'll finish up on Titus, uh, and uh, we'll see you Sunday at 10.15. Uh, um, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. The only true and wise God, may glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forever, and all of God's people say amen.